Next, I'd like to call the Howe Township Council regular meeting May 24th to order. Um, would you please read the opening statement, Ms. Holman? Let the minutes reflect that adequate notice of the holding of this regular meeting of the Howell Township Council was provided for in the following manner. By the posting of a copy of said notice upon the bulletin board in the Township Municipal Building on January 1, 2011. By the faxing of a copy of said notice to the Asbury Park Press, Tritown News and Star Ledger for publication on January 1, 2011. By the filing of a copy of said form of notice in the Township Clerk's Office on January 1, 2011. The public will be allowed to attend and will be allowed to participate pursuant to the open public meetings law. The public is reminded that civility and decorum will be maintained during the meeting. Any contracts awarded at this meeting or between now and the next meeting will be required to comply with the requirements of Public Law 1975, Chapter 127. In accordance with the Fire Prevention Code, be advised that this facility is designed with three emergency exits for your safety. The locations are as follows. Upon exiting the meeting room to the rear, there to immediate left and immediate right, and at the front of the meeting room at the left of the dais. Furthermore, smoking is not permitted in a municipal building. Please take note that this meeting is being videotaped for possible future broadcast on Howell Television. Cover roll call, please, Ms. Wallman. Mrs. Clark? Present. Mr. Nicastro? Present. Mrs. Smith? Present. Mr. Gatto? Present. Mayor Walsh? Here. Ms. Schlager, I believe we have no reason to go into executive <laughs> session this evening. That's correct, Mayor. Okay, I just wanted it to be on the record here on TV. Didn't want everybody to think that we were late. We had no personnel or contract issues to attend to this evening, so. No, sir. None that you didn't handle with Ms. King and Mr. Filiaccio, correct? Correct. And Jeffrey, I mean, Stephen, were you in on that? No, sir. <laughs> okay, just check it, Stephen. Would you all please stand for the salute to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would you all please remain standing for one moment in silent observation for our troops that are fighting all over this world so we get to enjoy the freedom and democracy between get to have on a daily basis. Me personally, I'll be praying for them to come home safely to the land that they honor and love on a daily basis. Acceptance of minutes of previous meetings um, was March 30th. Well, do we need separate votes? Or is everybody good for March 30th and April 5th? I don't think Mrs. Clark was here on March 30th. Thank you. I'm glad you uh, spoke up first, but that's correct. So separate votes, sir? Well, I think we have to. <laughs> Ms. Wallman, on March 30th, I don't believe uh, Councilwoman Clark was here on March 30th, so. Separate vote. Let's have a separate vote, please, Ms. Wallman. March 30th. I'll make the motion. Second. Go have a roll call. Mrs. Clark? Abstain. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Gatto? Yes. Mayor Wolf? Yes. Uh, I believe on April 5th, uh, Councilwoman Clark graced us with her presence. I did. Okay. We have a motion to accept the minutes of April 5th? So it moved. Second. And executive session minutes will be released, correct? Correct, as redacted. Okay. So I have uh, Councilwoman Clark, Councilwoman Smith. Can I have a roll call, please? Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Gatto? Yes. Mayor Walsh? Yes. Fortune Township officials. Mr. Nziani, anything to grace us with, especially about our dear roads? Uh, actually, I can give you a, an update. The uh, road contract that was recently awarded at the last meeting, um, we have a pre-construction meeting, I believe it's June 9th, and uh, it is anticipated we are going to start the week of June 20th. Uh, if weather permitting, we don't have, you know, eight straight days of rain, we anticipate finishing that before 4th of July. That does not happen in June, sir. Do not worry. Okay. Is the list of the roads that are going to be paved on our website? 
I believe it is, yes. Ms. Schlegel, is that a I'll check. I don't know offhand. Okay. Some people have asked. That's the only reason that I've told them to go to the website. Um, I imagine I'll get a call tomorrow if they're not there saying, I went to the website and there was nothing there. So, uh, Stephen, am I responsible for putting them on the website or are you, Stephen? Who's responsible? Me or you? <laughs> Me, of course. Thank you. <laughs> I want that to be on TV also. But then we know it'll get done. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> it's on the website from April 6, 2011, under the archives, on the, under the news. Stephen does his job, don't you, Stephen? Yes, Stephen's a good, young, good man, Stephen. Good man. Mr. Filiatro. Uh, nothing to report right now, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you'll hear from me in a few minutes. Well, thank you very much. Ms. King. Um, I just wanted to let the governing body know that I met with some members of the zoning board and our engineers and our code enforcement official and um, director of land use regarding some of the suggestions that the zoning board members had made in their year-end review report and we're going to work on those items that we could address <coughs> more expeditiously than others in the next couple of weeks. Is it possible for you to give a, a little recap in writing to the governing body? That would so be very I nice. Can, I can tell you one of the, one of the issues was Thank the co-location of the cell towers, but when we were discussing it and reviewing it, it wasn't just um, as simple as saying you could co-locate co under these circumstances. Our ordinance has to be um, slightly revised to address some issues that have come up in addition to allowing co-location under certain circumstances. Um, we also discussed the issue of uh, off-track improvements and how to allocate the cost for those, whether it's uh, in a situation where one homeowner is building in an undeveloped area and there's an unpaved road and others then move to that site and develop their properties as well. Um, in addition to where developers have larger developments that may affect your sewer, your water, your roads, and that um, the planning board doesn't have the ability to address right now. Um, so we're looking into that as well. Okay. I believe uh, we had correspondence in our packets about uh, performance bonds that were over on a court where we had uh, many residents of a, a court off of Locust, Diamond Developers, not Angel too long ago. Angel Haystack, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Haystack. Um, could you explain that to me? Uh, sure, that's actually progressing um, better than we had hoped. The, we had called the bond for the uh, on-site improvements that uh, were not completed by the developer because he went into bankruptcy or was actually, I think, involuntary bankruptcy. Um, so the bonding company um, enlisted the aid of a contractor or a surety in a, in a um, surety company to undertake their repairs. They also agreed to clean up the excess, I guess there's some construction debris at the site to do that without any additional cost to us even though they don't have to. There's also a COA unit one um, COA unit out there that is now being built and they're working with our affordable housing agent to ensure that they comply with the regulations and <coughs> are, you know, I think they're, it's a two family rental. So they're, everything's progressing actually. And, and we did repair the ho two homes or three homes that were unsecure. I think it was a garage door or a side door or a window. We did put up mm -hmm plywood and actually the bank reimbursed the town for that cost. Okay, so we secured those homes that were vacant? Yes. Okay, and then... And the res I speak to the resident, uh, uh, Mario, who was here um, the one time to speak to all of us, gave me a call the other day and said that they haven't had any problems recently, it looks good, they're happy with the way things are progressing. Okay. Thank you very much for following up on that and taking care of that. Uh, Seem like an injustice being done to the people that live there. So, Ms. Schlegel? Uh, yes, Mayor. I'd like to congratulate Chief Carter and his staff for again securing the continuation of $55,775 in funding to aid in offsetting the cost of the school resource officers. And I'd like to mention that as a result of our police department being in the accreditation program, 
will be receiving a $1,500 check from our insurance company. And all brush will be picked up by the end of day on Friday. All brush. All brush. Make sure to stop by Camelot Drive. My neighbor has some brush out there. If you put it out after the 16th, he'll be, he will we'll be cited by the code enforcement official. All the brush had to be put to the curb by the 16th. <coughs> All right, I'll yell at him tonight when I get home, no matter what time it is, okay? So if we were already in that neighborhood, we will not be going back. In that regard, if I may, um, there's a, uh, if it hasn't been picked up already, and I don't know whether, because we saw it yesterday, it was put out after the 16th, but on 524, uh, just as you come into Howell Township on the right, there, the, the which, whole length of the front. Which end? Uh, the right side. <laughs> oh, no, no. Uh, what coming what to Howell Township from Freehold. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. No, don't be sorry. Uh, I didn't make that yeah. clear. Um, anyway, it's the whole length of uh, the frontage of a property, and it's it's a bad section so if we I actually believe we were there today because I spoke to Mr. Gravatt and got an update today and he was ex explaining to me about the north and yeah. was saying about 524 so I believe that we did get it today well whether or not they're cited that's but that's I will, business, I will but I, it, sh it should be gotten out of the way it's it, it's uh, I think it's a hazard because it it's a narrow section of the mm -hmm. two-way 524 and it's just after you come around and it's by Spyglass, next to Spyglass um, Road where it goes into the uh, Adelphia Greens, Greens mm -hmm. development. Right there by the light, coming mm -hmm. out from, from the light. Okay, yeah, I will correct. send that to Mr. Gravatt just to make sure. I believe it was gone. I drove by there at 5 o'clock and didn't see it. Okay, good. I believe so. That takes care of that. Thank you both. Yeah, I took care of that. Yep, you did it all yourself. <laughs> <laughs> One stick at a time. Let's see, that would have been pick up your pickup about 10 loads, I think. Yeah, that's it. That. Stephen. <coughs> I just want to let the residents know that the second e, e new letter, the How Community Connection, should be out here in the next couple weeks, the month of June, July, and August. And if you're not signed up, please go to our website and sign up for any of our advisories. We could send in, out the emails to you. And how do they sign up, Stephen? They go to our website, www.twp.howell.nj.us. On the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see the e-newsletter sign up. Click on that, and there's a couple different things you can click on to get the emails from. Thank you very much, sir. Ms. Wallman, are you Nothing, just... Mayor. Nothing, huh? Just going to grace us with your presence yes. this evening, huh? Okay. Councilman McCastro? Nothing can I, Mayor. Councilwoman? Um, just to... I just wanted to follow up with our uh, last uh, last meeting I was here. We had a discussion about the historic um, proposal, we'll say just in general. Um, I had a conversation with uh, a another county resident that's worth, I'm going to follow up with you, McKenna, about this, um, who has a historic building um, and was talking about the county's uh, perspective on, on how they dealt with it. It was a countywide ordinance, and then uh, there was some local, but it had some really, really, we'll follow up with it. I just wanted to mention it to you um, because it was, you know, it seemed like a good balance with uh, dealing with the historic issues but not being so restrictive. Um, so something we can, we can talk about um, further. I know also last meeting we were talking about um, the issue with the EPA and uh, the landfill. I was just curious if there have been any update on reaching out to we were going we were going to find out from the health department if there's any further information about the about WDI yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah we have not received anything yet we con I spoke to the county administrator uh, last week again mm -hmm. and she had not received anything and she was going to again reach out to the county health department because the county health department is actually the agency that should be receiving the uh, monitoring the, the figures mm -hmm. and the rate so she was going to reach out to um, 
Monmouth County Health Department. Okay. And that was, I don't remember if I spoke to her on last Friday. Or I was just saying, uh, the reason it came up is I had a conversation with someone about, you know, contacting EPA and maybe mm -hmm. something we can talk further about that might be helpful in that regard. Yeah, it's actually um, the County Health Department that would be the first line, but the first obviously. Line, right, so we're going to give that give that a try and hopefully okay. hopefully if they don't have them because technically they're supposed to be receiving those flow rates so if they don't have them then there's even a bigger problem great that's it for me thank you mm -hmm. councilwoman smith thank you um mrs clark brought up the two things two of the things that i was going to bring up and if i could expand just a little bit that sounds like a really good I idea that some of our work has been done already if there's a uh, you sounds found something with a good balance perhaps we could uh, get something in in writing that we could all see and decide how close that is to what we think we'd like absolutely I think there I think w talking to this individual who was a owner of a historic building um, and quite knowledgeable about different laws throughout the state he had some interesting perspective on the county uh, laws as well as the local laws. So something I can follow up with and we can talk further uh, about maybe getting a sampling to the state on what the best way to, uh, to handle that. I wonder if we could suggest a, 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 or find a tentative meeting that we could get that back by so that we could go forward definitely. I think that's a good Mr. idea. Mr. Walsh? Uh, how about how about setting a tentative meeting? Do you want me to get it? <laughs> Excuse me. Do you want me to get it? No, no. I was uh, your chairman of the uh, of the meeting. I want you to get involved in the setting up a time. Do you think we could do that? Ms. Schlegel. <laughs> how about like maybe the first July. meeting or uh, July? Right. I I think that would be a good target yeah. because we'd we'd have to reach out to. Yeah, and I think that's it. Uh, mm. My point was, it's not a, a, even though there is a sampling, it was a county that may not be as mm. compatible with mm. ours, but uh, this person had a very good uh, insight to uh, some of the issues. So I, I think that I was interested to see if there was a county ordinance. Oh, I see. County law that, that and I looked, uh, did a little bit of research on it on the, uh, the county website to see if there's, I didn't see anything, but hmm. figured McKenna's. We have our in-house attorney. I in know, it's very. <laughs> <laughs> we'll research that and try to have s at least something back for the July meeting. If not, okay, we'll let you know that the research got stymied and we'll have to make it in okay. August. Also, um, in our non-agenda packet, or in mine, I guess everybody else got the email electronically, um, report on the uh, global building mold. Yes. Uh, and that was from you, Helene. Uh, was that generated from another report or? No, that was a separate um, report. When I had asked, it, it was actually, if you saw it, I mean, obviously you saw it. It was just that electronic um, Well, it was email. from you, so I didn't know whether it was part uh, of another report. No, it was actually from an email. Okay, so because you Because okay. as a result of the um, Birdsall inspection, my question was, did anyone go? And that was their answer. And that was their answer. Yeah, and it was an email from you to us. Yes. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't taken from a, <coughs> another no. report that I'd like to have. No, yeah, okay. it was not. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. And, and I can oh. put that information on the website. You did? I mean, no, I did not, oh. but what I can do, I, I want to make a good sure idea. that you, will, that the council had mm -hmm. seen it. What I can do is I'll put it into a paragraph and just have that put on the website. Steven? Good. <laughs> <laughs> Under control. And uh, <laughs> lastly, um, uh, I know you had a meeting with Mr. Civitello uh, that MRSA and that situation. Yes. Um, can you tell us anything or are we going to get a report or? Sure. I, I actually had, um, it may have been after your packet was done because I actually sent out an electronic summary today. But let me just, I can update, I can update you now. We met and the purpose of the meeting was really to discuss the estimated flow rates right. versus the actual and how does that come about and they explained to us that it's actually a guesstimate they base it on what they perceive as new construction to have happened during the year they informed us that back 
in 2008, up until 2008, that they had been sending out requests to the towns that are involved in MRSA, requesting that they give them the actual number of new construction permits. Well, no one was returning them, so they stopped doing that and or guessing at it, okay, according to what's been approved. And that seems like an important... Well, what happened was they were sending them to uh, construction departments and they were not following up on them. So as a result of the meeting, they will, again, at least for Howe Township, they will send us that request. They will also okay. copy the manager's Good. office, which they had not done in the past to any of the managers or administrators, and we'll make sure that they're getting actual numbers. The other issue that was talked about is that we, we asked if there was anything that we could do to lower the flow rates from MRSA. There were some recommendations made. For example, there's a similar to a dish that would go underneath the manhole covers, especially in those low-lying areas, the areas that flood. And we have a lot of those. Yes, so that we could see if there was inflow and infiltration. The other recommendation was that we perhaps get a cost estimate on a INI um, study that? to see What's in an I and I? In inflow and infiltration okay. study to see those, there's probably about I believe um, eight target areas that they suggested that we take a look at and monitor. I think it's been a lot of years since we've had that study done. It seems to me that uh, Mr. Konopka was mayor the last there, time. There's none that I know of that it have been It didn't cover done. this particular issue. It was supposed to. It was talked yeah. about publicly and it was supposed to. So I wanted to give the council... So that's even worse. It. Everybody got the summary today, okay? And... Um, you know, we could talk about whether we want to move forward with, with that recommendation. And I do believe that they also would provide the council with a bar graph showing the actuals versus the uh, estimates. I think we need to add that as an agenda item at the next workshop meeting. Absolutely, that's. I agree. That's fine. But basically, that's, that's what what happened. Thank at you. The meeting. Uh, at, at least, least uh, I, we felt. I felt the information that it was very um, we can go forward and oh, maybe do right. better the other recommendation was that I forgot that we have the MRSA representatives once a month attend a council meeting to give the council an update on what's going on with MRSA so that's another discussion that we'll have next next month it'll be on the agenda I think we're gonna have to instruct them on what we want to know because we bring we bring them in and then we don't finish so I think if, if we if we could come up with maybe from our um, mm -hmm. sewer department whatever so that well, we'll put it on as a discussion item for the next okay for the next workshop we're starting we're going in the right direction uh, well, one question did um, when they guesstimate and they ch kind of charge us ahead and maybe mr. Filiatro knows this um, just like uh, in a snowstorm uh, when they give you an estimate on your electric bill because they can't come out the next Actually. time they would uh, they would resolve that and compensate the have they done that in the past or yes. do we just keep they, okay no, so at the end of the year that's that thing credit. at the end where we get credit sometimes mm -hmm. yes okay yes because we are actually, I just want to clear, we do actually pay for just the actual, but the problem is that we see it, what we've been seeing, what it's been trending, is that we've been seeing it as a credit instead of being closer to the actual. And it's difficult to have a fair uh, charge right. to the users. That's correct. Okay. Maybe we can do better. Can I just ask one question to follow up on that? The I was curious. Had it did you talk about any other towns have any issues? Are we the only town that's requesting no. this information or? No, no. If, you look, if you looked at the charts of what everybody's increase was with the exception of maybe one town mm -hmm. and a portion of Wall, which has a very right. small servicing area, looks like everybody was having some of these very same issues. But my, my question was, was anybody, any other towns asking, f complaining, bottom line? Was anyone going I don't, second? they didn't. 
They didn't, they offer, didn't that. offer that information, <laughs> okay. um, but I don't think so. I think that because I I did feel that they were somewhat surprised that we that we questioned that we were questioning. Well, I, think I think it's I mean I, I think it's a, it's such an important thing given you know it's money out of people's pockets. <laughs> it's a very difficult financial time for people and. You know, ultimately, if it's credited, that's great, but that's still money out of their pockets, and and I think it's uh, wonderful that you brought them in. So I think we made that very clear. Great. Councilwoman, is that it? Oh yes, I'm sorry. I thought you'd gone on beyond me. No, ma'am. I'm just so thrilled that you said I was a chairman tonight. Mark down the date. Today's <laughs> five twenty-four. Maybe it'll take five more months, and she'll call me mayor. <laughs> Deputy Mayor. Nothing, Mayor. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty good this evening. I'd like to thank the Boy Scouts for being here this evening. Thank you very much for coming. I hope you learn a lot. So, all right. Um, I believe that we have a special presentation this evening. Um, <coughs> He's looking clean. His lovely bride must have took him to the barber today. Um. <laughs> Wake up, Stanley. <laughs> yes, yeah, Stanley, he's teasing you. Stanley, I would never tease you, Stanley. Uh. <laughs> Uh, will the members of the governing body please come down with me? Do we have the microphone? Come on, Stanley. I don't want to get down, but would you give me an opportunity to say a few words? Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Daddy, I want some relics from you. Suspects. I'll give you a quarter tip from me being lost. Oh, don't be taking that back. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good luck souvenir. I've been fooling around with that. This is Stanley Moss City Act for those of you that I haven't had the, the honor and privilege of meeting him through the years. Um, he's one of the he is one of the pillars in this town for a long, long time. His dedication, his loyalty, his respect for the for the land here in Howe Township. Uh, I don't know who's went as far. Um, I've had many interesting conversations with him through the years, and and they were enlightening. Um, but uh, you know, we just wanted to honor Stan. You know. He hasn't been here as much as some would like. He's been home a lot more than others like. For me personally. Well, by Point Road, yeah. No one stops on Yeah, for me personally, uh, you know, I would stop by and chat with Stanley all the time. Uh, he's been, how many years you've been in the house, Stanley? Many, many moons, boy. How many years, Stanley? Well, I don't know. Uh, I'm born on 83, so he's figured out now. 83 years old. Probably at least 50. At least 50, how many Stanley. Years? Fifty-three. Yeah. Three years. Little lamp. Go watch. Stanley, what else is giving me? Uh, <laughs> 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 on behalf of the governing body and the people of Hell Township, we just wanted to. Okay. 
read the certificate of appreciation. You want to present it to Stanley Marciniak in appreciation for your many years of dedicated and loyal service to the Township of Howe, including membership on the Planning Board, Environmental Commission, and the Manuscrown Watershed Management Group. Your knowledge and experience have been invaluable to our community. Presented with gratitude on behalf of the Township Council on the 24th day of May, 2011, and it's signed by me, your friend, Mayor Robert Francis Walsh. Thank God bless you, Stanley. Thank, Thank you, boys. Thank you. Stanley got some junk. He'll tell you his valuable art. Believe me, folks. <laughs> Believe me, brother. I'm going to put them on a boat and send them down the other way. Mm -hmm. other than the, the Stanley, I'll, Stanley, I'll stop by at the four-way stop and say hello to you and see what's going on, okay? okay. Tomatoes or, or peppers, what do you want? <laughs> uh, tomatoes. I don't, I don't like hot stuff. Mm -hmm. God bless you, Stanley. Thank you for what for the town for, for many years. And before we start the meeting back up, after Stanley sits down and we sit down, Councilwoman Smith has asked if she could say a few words about Stanley. I asked her to kindly be nice. <laughs> All right, because contrary to popular belief, the Councilwoman can get a little bit testy, a little bit feisty out there. I'm going to show you some papers. You can show me some papers later, Stanley, after the meeting. Okay, God bless. Congratulations. Thank you for your work. Thank you. I, uh, I can't let this recognition of Stanley go by without uh, adding my 50 cents. Stanley has been a big part of the Smith family since we moved in, which then would have been next door. There was only a, bar, a barn between our little house that Don and I rented when we first came to Vanderveer Road and he and his family and his young children. Uh, Stanley has always been an influence on us. Uh, some of you up here will be really, I, I don't know, happy or unhappy to learn that Stanley is uh, the person most responsible for me being here all these years. His influence Wait till I get my hands on you, Stanley. I knew that'd be the attitude. I believe he was first appointed to the planning board after years of volunteer work in a pro about 1978. Does that sound right, Anne? Something like that, the late 70s? And all the years through until the early 2000s. Uh, he has put in more hours. Uh, I can tell you that Don has pulled them out of more swamps and brooks on site reviews between the Environmental Commission and the Planning Board. He served years as a site review and site compliance on the Planning Board when nobody else wanted to be bothered. Stanley would tromp out there and make sure everything was all right, tell us what needed to be fixed, how things needed to be done in his own particular unique way. He has more heart for Howell Township, and he has done more than I think everybody else in this room put together, all of us out there, there, and here, whether we're appointed, elected, or employees. I, I can't say enough about him. Just thank you, Stanley, and keep going. His advice to all of us has always been, your health is your wealth, and smile. And I think that's wonderful advice, and we wish him long, happy life in his Retirement, and Ann finally has them. <laughs> Thank you, Stanley. Thank you, Ann. <laughs> Take good care of them. Okay. Ann, told, Ann told me she wanted to back on the planning board. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, 
Barbara Dixon, uh, another one of the pillars I'm not thrilled with at this moment uh, of the community. I uh, would like to would like to say something here, and I'm going to give her the opportunity. Thank you, so Mrs. Much. Dixel. Thank you, Mayor and Council Barbara Dixel, uh, Hal Township, the Villages. Um, I would Doc Bratton and I would just like to present Stanley with a copy of the Hal Township Stream app that was made in 1978 that he, I'm sure, had a lot to do in preparing. Uh, I have a color copy, one of my color copies of the map and uh, I know he doesn't have one, so we would like to present it to him and thank him for all the work that he's done and all the bark turtles <coughs> he's gone out to look for and the mountain pinks and everything else he's gone out to look for in the waters. And um, he's just been a wonderful member of the community and he can never be replaced. Stanley is absolutely one of a kind. He will never be replaced. He is one of a kind. So Doc, no, Doc Ratton and I would just love to give him this copy of this color coordinated stream app. That's Thank just you. great. Then Stanley, you have memories of where you trotted through. Let's <laughs> give it up to Stanley, folks. Stansbrook was named after him. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's okay, Barbara. It's, it's okay. It was named after Stanley. Stanley used to swim there. And that's not the brook he saved. Once upon a time on the planning board, uh, Stanley discovered that uh, an applicant to get more houses filled in a brook. And he went about proving that that brook was there. And uh, we made them redig that brook. And they got 10 less houses than they wanted. All thanks to Stanley. Thank you, Stanley. Mm. <laughs> that story just brought a tear to my eye, Stanley. <laughs> Stanley, God bless you. Really, in all honesty, I've been fooling around with you for years. Thank you for all you've done. I know that you've put your heart and soul into many of the things in this township. You know, you take me for a ride, Stanley. It's all right. It's all right, bud. Get him out of here. <laughs> God bless you, Stanley. And Annie's all yours. You ain't going back on the planning board. Okay. Let's get to work. You taking them out? You're going to go look at a brook, Stanley. You got a brook to go look at. No. God bless all of you. <laughs> there goes history. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have work to do. Okay, we need to start out with the public hearing on the budget amendment only. At this time, I'd like to open the meeting to the public. Would anybody Mr. like Mayor, to speak about? Mr. Mayor, I do have to read the resolution into the record. 
by statute, unfortunately, before you have the public hearing. Okay. Could you close that door over there, please? Thank you very much, gentlemen. Good, Mr. Filiaccio, would you read it, please? Whereas the Council Township of Howe introduced its 2011 municipal budget on April 5th, 2011, and whereas the public hearing on said budget has been held as advertised May 10th, 2011, and whereas it determined to be desirable and necessary to amend said budget, now therefore be resolved <coughs> the Council Township of Howe, County of Monmouth, that the following amendments to the 2011 budget be made. Current fund, general revenue, surplus <coughs> anticipated from 2,653,061 to 2,649,901. Total surplus anticipated from 2,653,061 to 2,649,901. Miscellaneous revenue section S, special items to general revenue anticipated with prior written consent of local government services, public and private revenues offset with appropriations. Clean communities program from 88,741 to 88,893.29. Municipal alliance, municipal alliance on Alcoholism and Drug Abuse from 42347 to 45022 Recreation Opportunities for Disabled Grant from 25000 to 0. Child Passenger Safety Grant from 0 to 3000 DEP Communities Grant Forestry Management Plan from 0 to 3000 Emergency Management Agency Assistance Grant from 0 to 5000 Total section of special item of general revenue anticipated prior written consent of director of local government mm -hmm. services, public and pri private revenues from 605,094.41 to 593,921.70. Summary sure. revenues, one surplus anticipated from 2,653,061 to 2,649,901. Three miscellaneous revenues, so total section S, special items of general revenue, anticipated private and concern of the director of local government services, public and private revenues from 605,094.41 to 593,921.70. Total miscellaneous revenues from 13,852,852.08 to 13,841,679.37. Seven total general revenues from 44,068,155.08 to 44,053,822.37. Eight, general appropriations, A, operations within CAPS, Office of Emergency Management, salary and wages from 17000 to 12000 Prior year bills from zero to 2135 Total operations within CAP, 28,326,940 to 28,326,075. Total operations including contingent within CAPS from 28,348,940 to 28,346,075. Detail salary and wages. From 1902 412 to 1927 412, other expenses from 9 million 316 528 to 9 million 318 663. H1 total general appropriations for municipal purposes within CAP from 33 million 518 221 to 33 million 515 356. A operations excluded from CAP's public and private programs offset by revenues. Municipal alliance to alcoholism and drug abuse, other expenses. From 42347 to 45022 Municipal Alliance matching funds, other expenses from 6550 to 11255 Clean Communities Grant, other expenses from 88741 to 88829329 OEM Emergency Management Assistance Grant, other expenses from 0 to 5000 NJDLPS Child Passenger Safety Grant, other expenses from 0 to 3000 Recreation opportunity for individuals with disabilities, other expenses from 25000 to zero. Recreation opportunities matching funds from 5000 to zero. Green communities grant other expenses from zero to 3000 Total public and private pr programs offset by revenues from 890322.41 to 878854.70. Total operations excluded from CAPS. One, from 1,901,996.41 to 1,890,528.70. Detail other expenses from 1,045,781.41 to 1,034,313.70. H2, total general appropriations for municipal purposes excluded from CAPS from 6,693,234.41 to 6,681,766.70. O, total general appropriations excluded from CAPS from 6 million six ninety three two thirty four forty one to six million six eighty one seven seven sixty six seventy L subtotal general appropriations from forty million two eleven four fifty five forty one to forty million one ninety seven one twenty two seventy nine total general appropriations from forty four million oh sixty eight one fifty five oh eight to forty four million oh fifty three eight twenty two thirty seven 
summary appropriations H1 total general appropriations for municipal purposes within caps from 33 million 518 221 to 33 million 515 366 a operations excluded from caps public and private programs offset by revenues but may hear 90,000 322 41 to 878,000 854 70 total operations excluded from caps from 1 million 901 996 41 to 1 million 895 28 70 total general appropriations from 44 million 068 155 08 to 44 million 053 822 37 dedicated sewer utility budget operate appropriations for sewer utility debt service payment bond principal from 995,000 to 825,000 statutory expenditures deficit dedicated sewer assessment budget from zero to 170,000 dedicated assessment budget sewer utility dedicated revenues from deficit sewer utility budget from zero to 170,000 total sewer utility assessment revenues from zero to 170,000 15 appropriations for assessment debt payment of bond principal from zero to 170,000 total sewer utility assessment appropriations from zero to 170,000 be further reserved reserve be further resolved that two copies of this resolution be filed forthwith in the office of director of the division of local government services for a certification of local municipal budget so amended be further resolved this complete amendment in accordance with the provisions of the njsa 48 4-9 be published in Asbury park press the issue on may 13 2011 and the said publication contain notice of public hearing on said amendment to be held in the municipal building may 24 2011 7 30 p.m prevailing time now you may open up the public hearing on oh, this I amendment may. only yes sir i may thank you, you very yes, much mr filiaccio this time i'd open the meeting to the public if anybody would like to discuss this amendment only <coughs> no i'd like to close the public portion of the meeting uh, we need to adopt resolution r11-137a amendment to the 2011 budget i need a member of the council so moved mayor do I have a second? Second, Mayor. Do I have a roll call, please, Ms. Wallman? Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? I'm not happy that there's any raise at all to the, uh, any that will affect the public. And there is, I guess there has to be, um, unfortunately. But uh, the township must function. So in order for it to go on and function, I have to vote yes. Mr. Gatto? Yes. Mayor Walsh? Councilwoman Smith votes yes. I'll vote yes too. Remember that the nose too. Okay, that that was the uh, amendment that you just voted. Yes, the amendment. Yes. Now we have the adoption of the 2011 budget. I need a member of the I, council. I have a short resolution to read that to also? the budget document too. Yes. Okay. This, I promise this one is short. Be it resolved by the council, the township of Howell County, Monmouth, that the budget here here before set forth is hereby adopted and so constitute an appropriation for the purposes stated in the sums thereof set forth as appropriations the authorizations the amount of 24 million 325,000 for municipal purposes and 1 million 372,833 open space recreation form historic preservation trust fund levy so you remember the council so moved do I have a second second mayor do I have a roll call please Ms. Wallman Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Gatto? Yes. Mayor Wolf? Yes. Can I have the list for hearing the citizens? Thank you, Mr. Filiaccio. <laughs> surprise, surprise, surprise. Okay. This time, like don't believe me, public comment on consent agenda items. Um, Barbara Dixel, come on down. This is for all of Consent agenda. Mrs. Dixel, name and address, please, for the record. Good evening, everybody. Barbara Dixel, uh, the Villages, Freehold, Howell Township, Monmouth County. Okay, let me just 
get right marked off things. 7A15. 7A15. Uh, 7A15 is. What property? Authorized duplicate tax sale certificate. I uh, read it um, earlier. What is that for? It's just to issue a, a, a tax sale certificate that has been lost to, re to replace it. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Do you know what property it is, or we can't say it? Oh, I saw the list earlier. It's there in the right. books, but but that really isn't important. Okay, no problem. What, no problem. What are you asking? Are we trying to slip something by? Uh, no. No, no. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I just was curious to what, what the it block and lot. All right, seven A thirty five. I, and I see you're going to do the ordinance tonight. And yeah, what would Barbara, be the immediate effective date? I was going to ask that procedurally we should separate yeah, we, that we and vote will. on it later. We will do that. Um, typically, we just lift, list it with the resolutions, but I would have alerted the governing body to um, make a motion or move that motion after um, you take a vote on the ordinance. So 7835 will Rather put to later? Yeah. Yes. You're okay. going to do that just after the ordinance. Okay. 7835 okay. will move to later. But okay, what it, thank what you. It just doesn't, we don't have to wait the 20 days for the effective date. It's effective immediately. Okay. 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 Fine. Um, 7A40. 7A40, which is uh, authorized special emergency appropriation, hybrid tax assessment, $580,000. Okay. What would you like to what is that? address me, please, Mrs. Dixon? What is that? Um, the governing body, we have to reassess the properties instead of doing a full-blown revaluation within a certain period of time. We're allowed to do a reassessment. Um, if we do not do a reassessment, uh, all the tax appeals that we're losing down in Trenton will put a, a larger burden on the citizens of Howe Township if we don't do this reassessment now. So. May, I, may I address it uh, in plain English? All the, uh, because the real estate value is going down and it's not accurate, this will make it accurate. Is that an easy way to say it? It adjusts the um, tax assessment so that they're more in line of the uh, uh, actual real estate value because of the, uh, because it's gone, they've all gone down. They're not accurate now. So the ones that are present are the ones that were part previously, right now. Okay. And also, I, I'm going to I'm going to give um, a couple of um, reports on the Matita Kunk River from several newspaper articles. Or we can set the agenda items. Okay, I'll oh. just okay. That's it. Fine. Thank you. I'll just give this over to the. Wait, excuse me. Isn't this? Isn't this? Uh, this is a regular is. meeting. It's also a hearing of citizens on everything. Right now. Yeah, I think it is. Already. That's fine. Okay, Barbara, yeah, I'm since done. you're the only one, go ahead. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm done. Since I'm you're the only one, go ahead. It's public comment off also. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Raspberry Park Press, May 5th. Uh, Governor Christie honored for Barnegat Bay efforts. Um, they, they honored him. Uh, he'll get the two, two, 2011 Guardian of Barnegat Bay Award and recognition. <laughs> of his fulfilling campaign pledges to help restore the Bay's ecology. Um, the Bay is now one of New Jersey's top environmental priorities and has federally funded programs that will take care of the short and long-term ecological health of the estuary. Okay, um, May 12, 2011, a uh, new Bay study cites declining trends. There's a loss of underwater seagrass meadows in Barnegat Bay where 50 to 88 percent of the plant mass has been lost since 2004. This is part of the State Bay report given at the meeting that was held at Ocean County College in Thomas River that I also attended. Uh, water sampling uh, done in 2010 uh, showed low oxygen levels linked to microscopic plants um, that bloom, uh, die off, and then are consumed by bacteria that use up the oxygen needed for fish and crabs. Um, aerial surveys showed beds of submerged eelgrass and uh, W-I-D-G-E-O-N, Wigdon grass, whatever, um, a critical uh, shelter for fish and crabs. Um, part 
the um, bad news is that a lot of the what's wrong with the bay is um, the ecosystem of the bay has been changed from being overfed with plant nutrients from nitrogen compounds that come from air pollution, fallout from animal waste on the ground, leaky sewer pipes and lawn fertilizer. The nitrogen flows increase is from a major jump in population development, storm drains, pouring rainwater with nutrients into the bay as well as more of the bay watershed being paved. Development grew to 30% of the watershed, replacing woodlands that once soaked up the water with trees, taking out nutrients before they could get to the bay. Uh, 1.43 million pounds of nitrogen come into the estuary every year, with two-thirds of it carried into the bay on surface water flowing off the watershed. Um, and um, uh, the governor vetoed a bill on water pollution. The bill would have allowed fees or new taxes for developers. The bill was aimed at cutting the flow of pollution into Barnegat Bay. The freeholders opposed it. It does not require the planning board and 33 municipal planning boards to develop stormwater management plan. The boards could impose fees on new development <coughs> to pay for improving and maintaining stormwater control facilities usually pipes and basins to catch water running off lawns and streets. The runoff carries pollutants, oil, animal waste, and nitrogen from lawn fertilizers. The fees could be used to provide incentives for property owners to reduce the runoff. Um, Jeff Tittle, the Sierra Club, said the governor has declared war on Barnegat Bay, as well as the rest of New Jersey's environment. Again, um, that's just about it, and I'm, I'm giving these newspaper articles to Mrs. Schlegel and, and um, Mrs. Kingdom so that <coughs> you guys can all get copies of it. Um, Thank you very you. much, Mrs. Dixon. Uh, and let me ask you, sir, uh, the copy I got in the mail, um, that was the response from Hal Township because I have to give that to the, that, that was it? Yes. Okay. I went to Rob Coral. Oh, you already sent it? It went by email. He got it. Okay. By email. Okay, because because the letter I have is not signed, so I just. Yeah, he he received it by email. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you all. Okay, this time I'd like to close the public portion of the meeting. Mayor, we're just pulling off the uh, <coughs> seven eight thirty five. Seven eight thirty five. We're going to have on a separate vote later on, correct? And the, yep. And then there's just one add on, which is seven eight forty one. Seven eight forty one. Seven eight forty one is. If nobody has any questions and everybody's on board with it, I'll make the motion that we. Uh, add on uh, 7A41 and remove 7A35 for later vote. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second. Cover roll call, please, Ms. Wallman. Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Gatto? Yes. Mayor Walsh? Yes. No motions. 7C1, Department of Community Development. That was my intention. Okay, no problem. Okay, we can move on. I can move on. Can I move on, Stephen? <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, Stephen. Okay. Discussion 7C1, Department of Community Development. The Township Council discussed matter regarding Department of Community Development. Would anybody like to, uh, Ms. Slagle? Is this your? Uh, uh, yes, Mayor, it is. Um, in front of you, there is a draft of an ordinance creating a Department of Community Development. And um, as, as you're very much aware, we have some, it seems there's some communication and other stumbling blocks for both businesses and residents 
when it comes to getting permits and that type of thing. So after we had an evaluation done of the engineering department, the planning department, and the construction code department, and we recognize that we have some issues with the permitting process and some customer service issues. So what we would like to do is create a Department of Community Development. It would be, just so we're clear, there would be no additional cost to the township. It would be done through attrition of some other positions. And- Let's keep it down out there, please. Our goals in interrupted. Can I ask for clarification? Yes. This would be a, a new person, a new, we would be um, developing a new uh, position. Is that what you're yes, saying? Yes, sort of like um, an ombudsman, you know, somebody to work as a liaison to both the residents and the businesses. Not only that, they would also oversee those three departments to ensure but that they, they would be head over all those yes, departments. Yes, yes. So the goals are for streamlining the permit process, enhancing customer service, better utilization of the staff, and promoting uh, teamwork communication and providing a positive work environment. We, we feel that we've been evaluating the concerns that come in overall, and it appears that there's, there's an issue that we, we want to work on and we want to improve. And we're always looking to improve the process. So this is one of the ways that we are doing this. But in order to do it, we would need an ordinance created. Right now, um, our engineering division is over the Department of Public Works or under the Department of Public Works? How does, how does it work here? In They're Hall neither right now. I mean, I know before. I don't, I don't believe that right now they're over the Department of Public Works. We have the Director of Public Works who's handling Public Works, the Engineering Department handling Engineering. I, that being said, the Engineering Department works extremely close with the Department of Public Works on all capital projects. And also land and use. And generally on those capital projects, the engineer is the, lead is the leader on a capital project. Okay. D we are in the we are in the customer service business. Um, the reports seem to lend to that this would improve customer service tremendously in how township. Um, what we're finding is that I mean, as everyone knows, our resources are down, and we need to maximize those resources. And the best way to do that is to have someone be able to bring all those three departments together working smoothly improving the workflow and if right currently there's not one person who could really you can go to if you do have an, a, a problem I mean they'll come to my office but as far as the process goes there's there needs to be someone who's going to enhance that process so they're going to make sure we're going to try to uh, improve our turnaround times. So let's just say for the sake of argument right now, it may take three weeks to get a permit. Well, we want to make that, we want to get to one week. So a little bit at a time, we need to mm -hmm. set those goals that are reachable. And that's, this is an attempt to help do that. That sounds great, except in reading this, there's <coughs> more to it than that. Right. Go, go ahead. What did you, you say, Councilman? I said in reading this, there's a lot more to it than that. I mean, that sounds fine and something I, I approve of, but um, under the, uh, the Division of Land Use and Planning, uh, that has, uh, how does that individual involved in that? Because it says, for instance, number five, code enforcement officers perform various types of field and office work involved in ensuring it, that residents, places of businesses, business and, and citizens comply with various municipal ordinances. Uh, it, it seems like it's putting, giving more power to the code enforcement officers. They have power now though. No, that's what they do now. Yeah. That's, uh, their, that's their official, I don't know what right? the Excuse me? That's their official, that's their requir statutory requirement. But what would that have with a new position? That's my point. 
It, that would Nothing. not change. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that it, would not if, change. if I read this right, this is more having somebody over those three divisions to coordinate that's those correct. three divisions working yes. together. That's that's correct. Uh, and no changes okay. in them because the, but the, and that's the only disposition that this suggested created position would be over these and it wouldn't change these at all. It no, it would not. It, 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 well, that that being said though, we may find that we have more staff in one place than we need. We may be uh, transferring staff among the departments to make the workflow better, to be more efficient. And this individual would make those decisions? Yes. That's make the recommendations to my office. It will be added no new salaries, just shifting of salaries that are already allocated, correct? That's correct. Any mo the, there would be no additional expense to the taxpayer. I just, uh, I just want to say that this is fantastic. I'm really, something that I know strategic plan has been talking about a lot with the business community, with residents, um, been uh, a big, big issue. And I think this is uh, just unbelievable. I'm really, really uh, pleased and uh, I 100% agree. How would this individual um, help, for instance, uh, the citizen who is asking for a permit to do something I would consider minor around the house, but you need a permit for a, a, a walk, a deck, a roof, something. Right. Yeah, a roof isn't minor, but I mean, it should be, I think those types of permits should be easily obtained. And uh, I myself have experienced and known, had many people tell me that they can't get an answer. They keep calling, they keep going, and will this individual make sure that, uh, mm -hmm. I don't want to use the wrong terms and insult anybody, but I'll say the clerk or secretary behind the desk that isn't an inspector can answer the questions. Yes, be one of the- Oh, you followed all that. One of the, no, one of the items that we're trying to make sure happens is that all of the clerks in all of the those three departments, because you know they all work very closely together. Mm -hmm. They all need to be cross-trained. They all need to have mm -hmm. answers, maybe some centralized permitting, those types of things, so that will make the process much easier for those residents to follow. Additionally, I would expect that they'll also do a very simple um, you know, handout. I know we have one on our website now. What do I do if I need a, a deck? You know, how do I get a deck permit? We have all that information now. But I think this person will actually help them walk through the process or have someone designate someone that will actually walk them through the process. And right now, our three departments are operating three as best others. that they know how, you know, as best that, that they know how. But I think with some of these, some additional guidance and someone who is familiar with all three departments and knows the workings and the permit process, that that person would be able to assist them in making those changes. I'm all for it if it makes it more efficient. Um, something has to, uh, I was thankful right before I came here, I was talking with a bus driver friend of mine who drives in New Jersey Transit who was telling me that somebody was waiting nine weeks for a pool permit. I said, don't tell me in how. He said, no. It was in another town close by. Uh, and I said, well, you know, different things come into play with pool permits, especially in April. You know, it's, everyone wants their pool put in right in the springtime before the summer. Doesn't want to get it done in October, November, because then the pool's not going to be used for a while. So uh, I, I said, it, there are many more pool permits wanted in April. So I try to defend the other town, but I was thankful it wasn't how. Um, but uh, we do have to get more efficient, and I do think cross-training people, the union's fine with that, cross-training people. Absolutely. Okay, because I know sometimes in the past we've uh, had grievances filed against us because you hear that line it's not my job um but if we if we adjust the um description of the jobs 
so that they do <coughs> include all those things, then how could they say it's I, not I their job? I will tell you that the union has been extremely cooperative in Good. working with That's the nice to hear. and working with the administration regarding uh, redoing the job descriptions. Good. So I Good. have to say it's they're working with um, Mr. Great. Capote and the Human Resource Department, and they're working on because our job descriptions also have not been revamped in a while, and that's something that needs to be done. And that, that kind of goes hand in hand mm -hmm. with, with this. this. But I really feel, I mean, I've spoken to uh, our department heads. I feel that they are on board with this. They're willing to work with it and try to improve. I mean, everyone recognizes that right now they run around like th there's they're short on help, they're running around and you know, trying to get things done the best they can. They need, so we need to just make some changes and streamline the process, have someone help the businesses and the residents come in. And the department heads are fully supportive. Okay, good, I'm fine with anybody else? Okay. May, you know, I just wanna say, I know this doesn't diminish the hard work that everybody does, but this is definitely a step in the right direction. This is long overdue. Um, I know this has been looked at for the probably close to six months you've mm -hmm. been working on yes, this. Yes, I have. And I think it's now time to pull the trigger. So I, I wholeheartedly support it, and I think uh, it's going to be better for how for everybody. Thank you. You have your direction. Okay, then um, look for an introduction of an ordinance at the next workshop. Great. Everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Get it Thank out to us beforehand in case anybody wants to put any input on and tweak it beforehand. Absolutely. Well, you have the ordinance tonight. If you would like to read over it carefully and send any comments that you have um, emailed or send them to my office and we'll make those changes. Okay. Number two, 72 proposed ordinance criminal history background checks. Um, we're just really bringing us up to state statute and what we need to do to upgrade our Checks yeah. here, Ms. King. Yes, and well, not necessarily just that, but um, right now the we were paying the extra cost to get these background checks done, and we don't need to do that anymore because the sponsoring agency that we were using, which was KidSafe, no longer provides us with the service that we were paying for. So now any volunteers um, have to go through their sponsoring agency, whether it's uh, I don't know. Morpho, well, no, I mean, whatever, whatever oh, uh, PAL right. or whomever it is that they're going to volunteer for, they're going to get, they're going to use their VRN number and go get their criminal background checks done. And yeah, didn't I just give a pamphlet to uh, uh, Mr. Falco that there was an outside agency that was willing to pay for all the fingerprinting done? Grant, I think he's done there was a grant. I have not spoken to Mr. Falco. I don't know if he applied for that or not, but. What we're doing is we're getting out of the fingerprinting business, which we really don't need to be in. What like has the basin business? Like the basin business. Except but we can't get out of that. What, no, we can't. But what was happening is the sports organizations were actually paying for the fingerprints. Uh -huh. None of that will change. The, an additional $12 was being paid by the township to a third party who was providing ID cards and putting the names on a website. Well, there's been some issues with that. So the procedure will stay the same where the sports organizations or all the volunteer organizations, because it's not just sports, it's any volunteers with un un um, unsupervised access to minors, will still have the <coughs> obligation to do the fingerprints Mm -hmm. And what they'll do is they need to provide the township with a certified list of their volunteers stating that they've been fingerprinted. There's no additional liability to the township. It's the same procedure. The only thing that we are dropping would be the paying the extra $12 per volunteer. I forwarded this to um, the chief of police who uh, then forwarded it to Captain Mayfield, I what he was. Captain Mayfield, and um, Just keep it down out there, please. Steve Garrity. Okay, and um, Sergeant John Fortunato also looked at it as well, and both of them signed off on it, said it was fine. Actually, the only recommendation they had was to increase the penalty, <laughs> so I did that. And the appeal process would remain the same, right? 
We, uh, we received an email or a letter from the Rec Advisory Committee. Um, I wasn't at the meeting where this was discussed, but um, I guess they must have either heard about the policy or knew about a change. And some of the things they specifically thought was happening or prior, probably prior to this ordinance change was that they, they were made aware that the organizations were now responsible for their own fingerprinting costs, self-enforcement, and record keeping. And I guess that is correct, but they, they went on to say that they had further concerns about that this, the actual self-policing and the record keeping and the lack of a penalty clause. The penalty clause is clearly in there. And just for the record, they, they were self-policing before, before that. Okay. The, the self-policing did not change. They were self-policing. They provided the Recreation Department with a list of volunteers and certifying that they had mm -hmm. been fingerprinted. That's for going off for years, correct? Yes. Okay. So, so essentially the concerns that they had really don't have anything to do with what we're changing now. It's what was happening before for their concerns is still happening. That's correct. Okay. We want to make sure we get that on the, on the record. Mm -hmm. And like I said, when we had originally first went out to a third party, there was a, a good reason to do it at that time. But now, yes. s now right, that, that purpose is not necessary now. And now that years have gone by, all the organizations are used to doing this. It, it's not like when it first happened, there, were, there was some backlash regarding everyone being fingerprinted. But, but now it's the norm. They understand that. Sure. They know that they have to be fingerprinted. They they have no problem providing us with a list of volunteers. And then when they have to go to Tom's that. River or Jackson or Eatontown, why do we have to go there? Right, it's we been, had. There's been an ongoing. This has been an evolving. Right. We've had a lot of pushback, but oh. um, I think we're at the point now where the organizations have all stepped up. They've done a wonderful job in making yeah. sure that all of their volunteer rosters have been fingerprinted. They provide us always with the list. Uh, and the status of that list. We've had appeals presented to us through an appeal process, and it seems that everything's been working fine, so. Okay. Very good. Everybody? Mayor, if I just may, and, and I support this ordinance, it, it's, it's definitely necessary. I mean, there's, we, we can't do enough to protect our children. The only thing, and I had mentioned this earlier to the manager, was my concern was that uh, the process is for every four years. Now, I know we don't want to create a hardship for the organizations and everybody's a volunteer, but I believe the cost to do this is about $26. That's so I, right. I, I don't see it as a substantial hardship, you know. Um, but my concern is four years. Uh, I looked at most towns, they're between 30 and 36 months. I just feel four years is a little too long, and uh, I, I would like to see it go to three years. I mean, a lot could happen. Uh, with somebody's record within that time. So if we could catch it, you know, it, it's always better. That's just my recommendation, that it should be three years. But I don't think you could be too safe. No, you can never be too safe with our kids. You, you know, there is going to be some pushback uh, about lowering it from four years to three years. But, Ms. King, uh, uh, I would like to see if that is an accurate statement that most towns are 30 months to 36 months. And I believe Mr. Castro's council has probably done his homework. Okay. But if that's an accurate statement, I will support him in that okay. recommendation. Okay. If somebody gets a background check for one organization, are they required to get it for another or does it carry through? No, it will carry through. They okay. just need to provide a certifying letter. For example, if you were to become, if you were to become a teacher, um, police officer and you had been fingerprinted within the time frame it's not good forever mm -hmm. yeah. if you were fingerprinted within the last three years or four years whatever we make the ordinance then that absolutely is proof that you've been fingerprinted okay, okay well we're gonna you have your direction there yes Thank you. okay 881. Public hearing on ordinances. Uh, 881 is 
0-11-12 amend chapter 204-10 mobile home parks slash sewer and tax surcharges. Ordinance number 0 ds 11 12 introduced and passed the first reading in 5-10-11 and published according to law is now being taken up for further consideration of public hearing. After David publication, this ordinance has been brought press issue of 5-13-11 is submitted and noted that a copy of the ordinance has been posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building and the copies are available to general public upon request. Ms. Swan, will you please read the title of the ordinance? An ordinance amending Chapter 204 entitled Mobile Home Parks, Article 1 entitled Rent Stabilization, and specifically amending Chapter 204-10 entitled Tax Surcharges of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Howe. Does someone like to open the meeting to the public? If anybody would like to speak just about this ordinance. I'd like to close the public portion on that. Anybody from the council would you like to speak? No. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that ordinance number 0-11-12 be finally passed and adopted and that notice of its passage and adoption be published in the May 27, 2011 issue of the Esbury Park Press by reference to its title only. Do I have a second? Second. Can I have a roll call please, Ms. Wallman? Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Gatto? Yeah. Mayor Walsh? Yes. Is there, a, is there a way to from. turn that down? It was raised, if you recall. If I hear that buzz, it may be much longer. It's killing me. It's Ms. Schlegel, is there an ordinance here about MIS? <laughs> uh, Mr. Grimstad, I believe, is upstairs, so. Wow. We'll have him turn it down. Turn it if down. He can. Please. If he's listening. <laughs> You can say please, Councilwoman, turn it down. Okay. 882. I'm going to try to turn it down if I can. Eight eight two amend land use chapter one eighty eight solar ordinance. He's messing with us now. That's worse. No, he has to come. He has to come down. He didn't fix nothing. Yeah, let's, can let's take a break. Yeah. All right, I'd like to reconvene the meeting. Eight eight two. Amend land use chapter 188 solar ordinance. This ordinance amends the land use regulation to permit solar farms within the township of Al located in the SED zones. Ordinance number 0 11 13 introduce and pass the first reading on 51011 and published according to law. It's now being taken up for further consideration in public hearing. After David of publication of this ordinance, the entry board press issue of 51311 is submitted to note that a copy of the ordinance will be posted on the bulletin board. The municipal building and copies available to general public upon request. Ms. Blum, will you please read the title of the ordinance? An ordinance amending the land use regulations of the Township of Howe, specifically Chapter 188-2, Chapter 188-4, 188-56, 188-69, 188-69.1, and Schedule 1 entitled Permitted Uses and Schedule 2 Bulk and Dimensional Requirements for Non-Residential Zones and Schedule 3 bulk and dimensional requirements for residential zones of the revised general ordinances of the Township of Howe. This time I'd like to open the meeting to the public. Anybody like to speak about this ordinance? Yeah, sir, come on up. State your name and address, please, for the record. Uh, Rich Bartow. Uh, hold on into the mic, sir, please. Rich Bartow. Uh, uh, your address, please, sir? Oh, uh, 198 Ford Road, Howe. Okay. And um, this, uh, I just picked up a little bit of what you were doing I've heard like 90 acres, 60 acres, you know, they want to hide it and all this stuff. Solar is very, very expensive to install in big quantity. If you want to do 90 acres, you're talking $200 million probably. You're not talking small potatoes. Now, there are a lot of properties like mine, for instance, which backs up to the Metatecon. Now, there's five, six acres back there, which the public would never see. Faces south. It's cleared. It's perfect. It's supposed to protect the water in the Metatecon. Now, if you go into real large acreage, it can't be used. 
If I may. Uh, Hold on. Uh, well, I, I have an answer for please. it. Good. Go ahead, sir. No, so that what I'm saying is that if you want to do, say, six acres, eight acres like that, it's out of sight, it's perfect, and it's, uh, it's something that's doable that's possible. My son works for Trinity, and uh, he was telling me, like, they're doing 3,000 houses a year now mm -hmm. and a lot of big projects. The projects are running as much as $50, $100 million. They're, they're running all over the place. And uh, one of the things I would, just to get off for a second, is we're talking about getting the permits and all of this. They're running into a, a real problem where the guys are saying, we don't like the way the government's running the building inspectors. Come back in 21 days. And they're sitting there with truckloads of, of all the stuff ready to go to do a job. And they're just being delayed for 21 days. Our Is building sorry? department? No, but all over the state. That, oh, okay. They got my son as a troubleshooter. <laughs> okay. And all he's doing, he's working six days a week, is meeting inspectors every place. And he's, well, he's, his, my son's sort of a charmer. You know, she doesn't really fight with so, But they had... So into the mic, though. All right. They had, they had a lot of young guys going, and they didn't know what the hell was going on, and neither did the inspectors, because solar is very new. A lot of, a lot of guys are not familiar with even how it works. And, like, they, they run uh, electric lines just to, to, off the solar, which is real heavy copper. Well, they will throw away, like, scrap. They, they scrap maybe $1,000. $1,500 worth of copper because they run it long so they don't have any breaks in it. It has to be the right gauge, you know, all of this stuff. So it's, it's, a, it's a tricky situation that's all over the place with this solar, but my son's been talking to me. He had a guy come down to the farm. They were talking about spending $30 million to do the whole farm. I said, no, I don't want to do the whole farm. But I would, might consider the back because the one thing that comes up is that when you go to put solar into a farm, public service or GPU, whatever you have, electric company, they want a million dollars a mile to connect from that solar to the transfer station. That's a lot of money when you think about it. So they try to figure out where it's closest. Now the back of my property, for instance, we, we, we were disgusted because with the high tension wires running down, on the other side is already poles that go right to the transfer stations. In other words, it's, it's a doable property, but it's not tremendous acreage. So what I'm saying is that you have to consider small pieces that are tucked in that are perfect for something like this. May I ask a question of the attorney? Should make sure I'm Absolutely. correct before sure. I answer. Yes. Um, am I not correct that this uh, this doesn't apply to a partial or a little bit of a section of a farm? This is a whole area. Well, uh, we the have acreage requirement is 65. But that doesn't prohibit somebody from doing a few acres, does it? The minimum acreage. See, that's what you're saying, see? Well, then that's a loophole, and I don't know whether, because that's not what I, inten I intended, and that's not what the state regulations, they're separate. They encourage a few acres here and there, and I don't think the regulation should be the same for a whole 60, 65 acres is, is this one, right. as it would be for four, five, six, eight acres. That's a partial farm, and uh, if you, if you look into what the state is working on, uh, I, they I, encourage the partial, and I have no, I have, I have no, I don't so know about anybody else, but less. I certainly have no problem with now. it. I don't want to restrict people from doing it, but maybe that needs to be a separate order or an amendment, uh, ordinance or an amendment to the ordinance. Well, just so you know, it, even if you have, if you if you have a smaller size property, that doesn't mean that you can't go to the zoning board and get a variance from that. Why should you have Hold to on, go sir? for a variance for a lot of money? Okay, so you have to speak into Oh, I'm sorry. Mic. You're making more expense for families and small people. I agree. To go for variances and all this? It's, it's ridiculous. I Can we do it? What, what, I'd like to do show, here now. what I'd like to show you. Hold on. If no, I, I could. I, I, Hold on. Yes. Hold on. I don't think you need to make an argument. I think we need to find a niche somewhere to make it, to, to work into it, because I think just like most of uh, the farms in Howell, right. I think the future is going to be the small farm or the small section of property. And I, as I said, I would like to see either an amendment to this ordinance, not, me, it, not meaning we should hold this ordinance up, but a future amendment or, or whether it be a separate ordinance, I would take the advice of our attorney. But I definitely think that uh, I had no intention when I encouraged an ordinance to prohibit a small section of a farm. This is a total 
this is aimed at someone's total property. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of people like yourself. So may, may, I, may I? Sure, Councilman. Ms. Smith, this ordinance was for solar farms, which are going into the grid. This was not intended for the farms that they're going to be using for their own purposes. We're not using it for our own purposes. I, I, I understand. Sure. So the purpose of this ordinance was that large farms, solar farms, that are going to create 10 megahertz or, or more, we're going to be restricted to uh, 65 acres. Um, so that's where we're at today. When the state comes down and starts talking about using smaller farms, then I think there will be another ordinance. But this is solely for the purpose of large solar farms. Well, it should state that it doesn't affect small. I'd like to show. It doesn't state what? I'm sorry. It doesn't. I didn't. I didn't. It doesn't state what? I'm sorry. Hold on. Okay. Have your chance and let us speak a little bit. Let us. Does this preclude us from adjusting this later on to allow smaller pieces? Not, not at all. Okay, so this and, does not and preclude us. If the state adopts certain regulations and they preempt us, then those regulations will control without us having to do anything. This ordinance, if I perceive it correctly, is to just keep solar farms from going everywhere and anywhere. And I was having some control over it. Correct. As a governing body. Correct. Okay. Uh, solar farms, but not solar installations. Hmm. I mean, it, it clearly says in the scope of the ordinance that it's for solar facilities and structures capable of generating electrical power for the general citizenry of the state, region, and local community. The type of solar installation you're referring to doesn't apply to that because oh, no. you're, because no. you're not going to. On the contrary, the six six acres would be enough to supply schools and everything else. That's a lot of panels. Just you're talking the, maybe twelve that, million dollars. But then that that if somebody wants to invest with, this, that contradicts with all the guidance that we got on the minimum megawatt rating based on the area of the land. Correct. So you that couldn't you sense. couldn't do what is yeah. being suggested. It's a company with data values. Right. Well, no, I'm but but the the size of the field he this gentleman is referencing would not be of enough size to connect to the grid, right? Without that, spending that, a lot of money, and you'd have to produce a certain amount of megawatts or I forget. Right. May I make a suggestion before you pass this ordinance? You talk to somebody like the engineers from Trinity or something, because that's who we spoke with, and they're doing these all over the state. And that is enough to hook into it. it. That's enough to supply a shopping center, homes, everything else, not just a farm. Okay. You're not so you're not talking about an acre or two or on a barn or something like that. You're talking like six or seven acres laid out. That's a lot of solar. Trust me, that's a lot of solar. So we could go from 65 to 80 and now down to six. Is that? I don't understand what we're trying to do. In all honesty, I I, I thought we were doing something to make things restrictive because there were certain aspects of solar fields that we didn't like so that how was my would understanding we, so how would we should we think about applying any restrictions to somebody's backyard or somebody's six acre portion of their property I, I would assume there would be a lot of outcry if we tried to do that wouldn't we I'm sure there would problem. be I don't have any problem with. See, I have 40 acres, but the, the side and the back feeds the Metatecon. Okay. Now, it's C1 water. That's all protected, but you're allowed solar on that. That's the only basic right, use so that we, I could have in situations like that. So if we like were that. to lower the, the acreage in here and it applied to you, right. would you be in support of all the measures that are required to be done on a solar farm that's at least 65 acres? Because it's pretty comprehensive. Yeah, it's Oh, it is, definitely. I you, know. It you, is. There's no be, doubt about it. Well, the you, thing is, if... You like that idea we, or you don't well, like that idea? Well, the thing is that I just feel that I'm surrounded where nobody can see it. Now, when I was reading the paper and all that, I had the articles there saying, well, they don't want the neighbors to see it. It's got not this and that and everything else. There's a lot now, of Now, you're talking in about engineering or you're talking about whether they can see it from the road and so on and so forth. It's everything. All right. Well, what you want, you want solar power because we're tired of paying for less oil and everything else. It's gotten out of hand. My propane bill for the house, 
four thousand dollars a year to heat the house yeah. four dollars a gallon yeah. i mean it's it's insane what's going on we pay two thousand dollars a year at the historical society just to heat that little schoolhouse exactly. down in the corner so you need the solar so maybe i might decide to put a, a a big new barn up or something if i could afford it uh, i would throw up a big barn maybe with solar but we, we talked about the field now i had engineers down here they came down to see me and they were from uh, an outfit, I can't think of it right now, uh, up in North Jersey. They were talking about 40, 50 acres. Like, oh, well, we'll kill, no. I said, what's back here along there is a perfect for solar. It's clean, it's out of the way. It's right next to the power lines that run, so they can run the lines right down to the transformers and everything else. It, it's actually a doable property. And I, from the picture, we're totally surrounded by trees and woods and all that stuff. It's like, just to it's reassure you, this is a, a rule proposals from right. Department of Agriculture, right? And it it talks about exactly what you're talking about, right? And when they come through and finish their rules, they were they will preempt, supersede ours, and you'll be you'll be fine. Uh, we're not we're not talking about controlling small portions of uh, of someone's farm. We're talking just talking about where there already exists entire well I you know it's I a, guess the rules and regulations would be right um prohibitive for you and coincidentally <laughs> when i was making my final read over of this ordinance this right. afternoon we got a call we have three acres mm -hmm. and they want to uh some company wants to put uh solar panels on ours i guess they're looking at properties right. uh in the area of small properties and they start out by saying well if you uh if you're uh, are, uh, want to basically have free electricity and right. they buy back the the difference so if they're looking at small areas like that we can't regulate that's not up to us i don't think to regulate unless well, i don't think we mo can most of it was basically almost a swindle to the people they didn't know what they were signing up for. Right. And they were signing away tremendous money. Tremendous money. Because they were saying, oh, well, it's They're not giving like, we'll it do away. this. And well, now the it's. Solar now companies it's, were swindling the people? Yes. Now it's up to seven, eight dollars a, a unit. They're getting paid thousands and thousands of dollars. All these people are getting is uh, something off on their electric bill and stuff by putting it on their houses and stuff. It, it got quite complicated. Even now, that's what all these ads are. Here, free electricity will cut your bill by 10%. But if you look at the credits that are involved, and I, I mean, I don't know all about it. Like I said, my son knows a lot more, and, and his engineers from Trinity, they, they, they got 300 workers running out every day doing this stuff. Well, you know? there, there's a lot of talk on the Internet and the radio and in publications about these credits running out. Well, I can assure you it's not going to happen anytime soon. But, you know, I mean, obviously, if you tap into any one resource long enough, whether it's oil or whatever it is, you're, you're going to deplete it. But right now it, this this is a very new market there are not that there, there are not that many solar farms in new jersey the credits aren't going to run out that's the reason why we started with the larger size acres okay the and i make a suggestion go ahead uh, that you move forward on voting on the ordinance that's in that's on the agenda if you want to put it on for discussion at an as an agenda item at an, the next workshop meeting then you do that Okay, because, you know, listen, I want to protect the citizens. At the same time, I want to restrict the citizens. Mm -hmm. So there is, uh, like me personally, I don't right. want to be driving down Route 33 and see a little five acres of glass right there. Just glare me, somebody in the eyes, they're driving down the road. To me? Absolutely. That, that's realistic. Right. Uh, okay. So I want to protect. At the same time, I don't want to restrict. Mm -hmm. So I am for passing this ordinance at this time and then tweaking it from here, whether we have to amend it, put in another one, because I don't want to restrict somebody like you from putting in the back of their piece of property a 40-acre farm, six, six right. acres with the solar panels, okay? Well, what I'm, but, but basically what I'm saying, Mary, is that, that my property, I didn't even approach them about actually doing it anymore. I've, I've been approached by them, but the point is it's a perfect property. It's surrounded by the wetlands, all stuff. It's a perfect <laughs> use for it. If I was to run horses back there, the nitrogen would go into the Metatecon, run down to the bay. You follow me? Just 
Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to say uh, it's, yeah, it's but a we good. We can't draft ordinances and put ordinances in place based on one perfect property. Exactly. Uh, okay, that's not the way it works. It has to be in general for the betterment and the good of as many people as possible, and what we think is right as a governing body. Mm -hmm. But we also don't want to restrict. None of us are up here uh, are restrictive at all, uh, as far as wanting to. No, I think it's. Uh, I think uh, you do uh, a hell of okay. a job. I really do. Do you? Yes, I Thank do. Because much, I sir. wouldn't want to come out like you do and face people and phone calls and everything else. Ooh. I give you a lot of credit. I haven't been here in a year and a half or so. Because yeah, you, you've been here before. Oh, yeah. yeah, a lot of times. But <laughs> yeah. I just, this solar thing came up. Okay. My son's involved in it real big, like, and like I say, he's, they're going crazy. They're working six days a week, 12 hours a day, running up and down the state. And sure. It's unbelievable. I have a buddy uh, that has a company that's doing a lot of solar, too. So, so. Uh, but... I am for passing this ordinance this time. Uh, it, it it does meet the needs of the people that we've discussed in the past. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I am for putting it up for discussion to I'm either amend it or putting something else to not be restrictive. Because I do understand, what, and I, I I would tell you, based on our conversation tonight, right. that I agree with you. Thank you. Uh, okay, but I still want to put something in place. Okay, okay. at this time. So, I anybody may else make, for the governing body? One more little suggestion. When you consider talking about it, all right, I would consider possibly a small subdivision, possibly put three small farms across and give them to my kids or something like that and have the solar in the back without going to such, you know, like a, a major, major going through, all, you know, all the stuff. There should be, we should work with people if you want the solar, if you want to bring the price of oil and gas down, if you want to, you know, what makes sense. Okay. So. Just, I'm giving you some thoughts and some ideas on it, right? And you're making sense, so thank you very much. One more thing I'm going to tell you. You already said one more thing. I, was, I know, but I was standing out front, and uh, uh, a Jewish rabbi came by with his little guy, and he wanted to feed popcorn to the goats that I have, the animals. And I said, okay. Guy goes by with a truck. I know him. He's a neighbor and stuff. And he's, he's cursing, like, you know, because I'm talking to this guy. Don't believe rabbi's cursing. Stop. So this guy said to me, you know, the rabbi, he says, do all people in Howell hate us? He's down from Brooklyn. He just moved there. He's a young rabbi. He's teaching at school. I says, no, they don't all hate you. He says, isn't there any Jews in Howell? I says, there was a lot of Jews in Howell. I says, you'd be surprised. I says, don't go by, you know, what people all say. I says, they get nervous because they see the mess you made in Lakewood. <laughs> and I told him this. I said, you can't drive through there because they go through stop signs and they bulldogs, OV tree, and all that okay. stuff. But I just wanted to bring that up because... If he said it, he came from Brooklyn, and he says, Howell hates the Jews. This is this well, is. Why don't right. you stop by and tell him tomorrow, tell him the, the mayor's married to Michelle Beth Bossa Mindel Steinberg. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Right. Okay. All right. So say the mayor doesn't hate Jews. Good. Okay? Thank you. God bless you. Mr. Smith? I really wasn't going to, well, first of all, Don Smith, 54 Vanderveer Road, Howell. Uh, I really wasn't going to speak on this ordinance, but. Thank you, Mr. Smith. One of the things I want to point out for the sake of the gentleman that just spoke, uh, Pauline has my copy of the uh, state agricultural, uh, uh, they have a, a rules pending that are going to cover exactly what this gentleman wants to do. And they'll be covered under the right to farm ordinance and they will still provide um, the uh, tax assessment farm land assessment and actually it gives them a a lot easier uh, means a, a lot less costly means to install those solar panels it's my understanding that really what we're looking for tonight is uh, ordinances for commercial solar fields uh, it's probably a misnomer to call them a, a solar farm uh, but they're true commercial now what the uh, SADC is looking at is a way for farms to supplement their income and with the uh, the solar use uh, that's been in uh, I think it's it, I think they're through with the public comment now but uh, I only have that one copy but uh, I can loan it to some oh you have it and perhaps you could provide a copy to the gentleman that just spoke it might make him feel a little more comfortable 
to you know, know what, that Don, this I don't know if he was referring to his property that would still be covered under the Right to Farm Act. I know that that's part of the proposed rules, yeah. and that makes sense. And and the farmland protected properties that's, that's going to be regulated as well, right and all of that right. makes sense. And none of what we do here has any effect on those properties. That that's the way I understand it. But I just that's you know the, the solar business it, it hit the state suddenly and. It, it caught everybody unaware. No ordinances. They could do whatever they wanted. We need to get something in place. Uh, there's a lot of problems I have with our current ordinance, and uh, you'll probably be hearing in the future as we try to, and, and I'm sure you intend in the future to tweak this thing because you're going to, there's going to be little problems here and there, things that have to be ironed out. But the basic protection is there. and. <coughs> I support it. Thank you. Thanks. Well, that's uh, that should be a yes from everybody. Okay. Ms. Admiral? Grace Abramoff, 26 Glenmore Road. And like Don, I wasn't planning on speaking, but. Thank you. Uh, how many 65-acre parcels <coughs> do we have and how? About 18 that would fit this criteria. 18? Are they mostly f uh, horse farms? I, you know what, I don't, I don't know. Okay. Only thing that I say that, I mean, I, I think this is also a, g a good use of open space, and especially with the concerns of uh, horse racing in Monmouth County, that if the tracks don't succeed, all those open spaces for of the horse farms rather than going to a developer to put houses on I, I i think that this is a good alternative use for all that open space uh and i don't know whether this is anything that's to be concerned about but i just need to would like to ask it uh and i don't know if anybody really knows the answer do these solar panels give reflection to the sky that might interfere with uh airplanes I mean uh, it's it's off the board but you know what all no. of a sudden you have all these big solar panels no I no, I don't I don't think they do and I think that was addressed in their design you know obviously they have to create a product that's not gonna have a design defect that's gonna incur uh, a multitude of lawsuits from well you know I mean no right. I'm just saying as as a layman I don't know anything F about that but based it was on just my understanding it's not an issue and and the electricity that it uh, I know it's a direct current to wherever it's going but that again would does wouldn't have any effect into the uh, transmission of signals from the earth to a plane and I'm sure that those probably have probably I'm been sure addressed. They've been addressed. Mm -hmm. I don't even right. think I'm qualified to answer that. Well, okay. <laughs> no, it's just, you know, those things. That, but I really think that, God forbid, the horse farming industry goes out of Monmouth County. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good alternative for the open space to keep houses Absolutely. off of it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Grace. Anybody else in the public? Mr. Cosby, are you saying hello? Would you like to speak, sir? Me? Yeah. No, okay. This time, I'd like to close the public portion of the meeting. I have a question. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. <clears throat> We've gone back and forth about this acreage, and I'm reading the items that Mr. Smith just referred to. And the requirements for the proposed requirements for the acreage are dramatically restrictive compared to what we have in our ordinance. It, it caps it to a, a ratio of one to five acres for. Well, it says one to five. Reading. I'm reading right here. It says, it says structures and equipment not to exceed a ratio of one to five acres or portion thereof of land devoted to energy generation and land, de uh, and land devoted to agricultural or horticultural operations or solar energy generation facilities installed on not more than 10 acres of farmland for which the property is applying for power generation. So they're clearly distinguishing between power generation and use on a farm. So if we go and pass this and we do 65 acres, what are we going to be revising or looking at or adding to? Nothing. 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 So, so this is going to get passed. This is going to get passed because you're, they're talking about. Hold on. We're talking about Trenton. Not everything that makes sense passes in Trenton. Well, okay. Let's say it does get passed. It's not going to have effect our ordinance 
Because it's dealing with a different property. It's dealing with solar generation facilities. No, it's, right. that's not. Right. No, no, it's, it's not. It's, it's they're dealing with farms under the Right to Farm Act. Right. That is. So ha yes. But ours, ours is ours something different. Is something different. But this right. is put it. But this addresses that too. Th this this addresses addresses a maximum of 10 acres For a farm. on a farm on. in which they are generating power. On a farm. Not for use on the farm. No, 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 That's but on a farm. Right. Under, if you have a right. farm, it's right to farm. But if you have a piece of property, not a but farm. But how many of the 18 parcels that you, ref you referenced are not farms? M meaning a farm under the Right to Farm Act, that they're tax assessed well. as a farm. If they're no longer farming, if they want to sell or use that entire piece of property for a, a solar uh, utility, then it's no longer under the right to farm That's ordinance. Right. The right to farm ordinance is where a part of the f where part okay. of it's still farmed and part of it is used for solar mm -hmm. energy. All right. So, like so this gentleman was talking about using five or six acres out of forty. Right. But what hold on. You're done. Okay, but but what is going to? What I'm getting at is is we're putting something in place because it makes sense to do that. I I completely understand that. I just want to know what the next step is because it sounds like we're going to do something. So we're, or, well, we're not going to do anything right well, now the until the rules if the rules pass. Yeah, we'll then we'll take okay, a look at so it and see if we need. So there's a set of rules under right to farm, and there's going to be a set of rules uh, that for properties that don't comply with right to farm. Correct. That's correct. And we don't know what that's going to look like yet. It's not for properties that don't comply with the right to farm. It's those that are farmland assessed on the entire portion and want to, I guess, parse off a certain amount for solar facilities as opposed to utilizing the whole parcel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that make sense? Quite honestly, I'm not sure any of this makes sense to me. <laughs> but, but I mean, I, I understand the ordinance as it's written today standing on its own merit. What I don't understand is... It's going to change in a few Yeah. I, I mean, are we doing this because we want some immediate protection in case somebody came knocking on our door today and we don't want to have to refer, is, is well, that what we're doing? it's regulation. We need to regulate all the, 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 func the land use functions of the township. I think the technology has surpassed the, the law, you know, laws haven't caught up with okay. the technology right. and, and I think that's kind of why we're in this predicament right now. And, and the rules that are proposed may, at, when they're adopted or if they are adopted, may have no effect on our ordinance. So between now and whenever, whether that whenever is because of something we do or something that another agency does, that time frame should be somewhat <coughs> limited so that by passing this, we are not creating an unfair burden to the people. Correct. Like the one okay. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Anybody else? <coughs> did I close the public portion of the meeting? Yes, I did. That's right. Sorry. No problem. Need a motion? May I make a motion that ordinance number 011-13 be finally passed and adopted and that notice of its passage and adoption be published in the May 27, 2011 issue of the Asbury Park Press by reference to its title only. Do I have a second? Second. Do I have a roll call, please, Ms. Woman. Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Gatto? Yes. Mayor Walsh? Yes. Mayor, do you want to um, take, make, uh, move the motion? At this motion? time, we'll do 7835? Yes. We have resolution 7835. Do I need to do anything special? Or just somebody make a motion? Somebody to just has to make a motion. Make a mo somebody make a motion to approve 7835. So moved. Second. Do I have a roll call, please, Ms. Woman? Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Gatto? Yes. Mayor Walsh? Yes. Okay, 883. Capital ordinance acquisition of real property for open space preservation, appropriate 350000 for the Tanofsky property. This, or, this ordinance authorizes the acquisition of real property for open space preservation, 
appropriates $350,000 and provides Block 51, Lot 66, Drew 70, on the Howe Township Tax Map, commonly known as from Tornowski property. Ordinance number 0 11 142 to pass the first reading on 51011 and published according to law. It is now being taken up for further consideration of public hearing. Affidavit of publication of this ordinance, Hathaway Park Press issue of 51311 is submitted. It is noted that a copy of the ordinance has been posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building and the copies are available to the general public upon request. Ms. Swamey, please read the title of the ordinance. Capital Ordinance providing for the acquisition of real property for open space preservation and appropriating 350000 therefore authorized in and by the Township of Powell, County of Monmouth, New Jersey. This is something like to open the meeting to the public. Member of the public like to speak. I'd like to close the public portion of the meeting. Uh, anybody from the governing body? I, other than uh, I'd like to say something if nobody else does. It's a good thing. Great job. Good Mr. Thing. Cossie, anybody who was involved in preserving another nice piece of property in Hall Township? Elizabeth. Great job. If you're ready. Yes, I am. Go ahead. Motion that ordinance number 0 11 14 be finally passed and adopted and that notice of its passage and adoption be published in the 5-27-11 issue of the Asbury Park Press by reference to its title only. Do I have a second? Second. Do I have a roll call, please, Ms. Woman. Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? With great pleasure, yes. Mr. Gatto? Yes. Mayor Walsh? Boy, me and Councilwoman Smith are just in sync tonight. With great pleasure, yes. And Mary, I'd just like to recognize the, the, the uh, Lake Restoration and Wildlife for really driving this uh, also along. Whoever was involved, if they were involved, thank you very much for your time and effort. Whoever. It's fine, Council. 884 0-11-15, accept donation to the Township of Certain Real Property, Block 71, Lot 21, 5998 U.S. Highway 9. This ordinance accepts that authorization from Claudette and Eugene Hammer. What? I believe it's David Hammer. Yes, yes. sorry, yes. typo. What was that? David. It's David Hammer, not Eugene. It wasn't a typo, Eugene and David. I don't know, I'm gonna call that a typo. <laughs> Error. Okay. Error. Uh, I mean, you know. Bad information. <laughs> like in France, I'd be Robert instead of Robert. <laughs> Okay, David and Eugene's not a typo. <laughs> okay, where are you from, ma'am? Not where I was from. Okay, order number 0 11 152 to pass the first reading of 5 10 11. Public court law will not be taken up for further consideration of public hearing. Have the publication of this ordinance to the Park Press issue of 5 13 11. Submitted note of the pot. copy of the ordinance to be posted on the bulletin board in municipal building and copies are available to the general public upon request. Ms. Rowling, please read the title of the ordinance. An ordinance of the Township of Howell authorizing the acceptance <coughs> by the Township of a donation of certain real property designated as Tax Block 71, Lot 21, pursuant to and in accordance with NJSA 40A colon 12-1. This time I'd like open a meeting to the public. Anybody from the public like to speak about this? I'd like to close the meeting to the public. Any man, somebody from the council? I'll make a motion ordinance number 0 11 15 be finally passed and adopted. The notice of its passage adoption be published in the May 27, 2011 issue as Park Press by reference to his title only. Do I have a second? Second, Mayor. Do I have a roll call, please, Ms. Woman? Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Gatto? Yes. Mayor Walsh? Yes. 885 0-11-16 amend 2011 salary orders for technical assistance to the construction official. This ordinance sets forth and adopts the salary range schedule for the technical assistance to construction official. Ordinance number 0-11-16 introduced and passed on first reading on 5-10-11. Published according to laws now being taken up for further consideration of public hearing. I've named the publication of this ordinance as a Park Press issue of 5-13-11 submitted and noted a copy of the ordinance with a post on the bulletin board. The municipal building that comes available to general public upon request. Ms. Roll, will you please read the title of the ordinance? An ordinance setting forth and adopting a salary range schedule for the salaries for certain officers and employees of the Township of Howe. At this time, I'd like to open the meeting to the public. I'd like the public like to speak about this ordinance. I'd like to close the public portion of the meeting. Any member of the governing body, if not somebody? 
May I make a motion that ordinance number 0-11-16 be finally passed and adopted and that notice of its passage and adoption be published in the May 27, 2011 issue of the Esbury Park Press by reference to its title only. Do I have a second? Second. I have a roll call, please, Ms. Roman. Mrs. Clark? Yes. yes. Mr. Nicastro? Oh. Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Gatto? Yes. Mayor Walsh? Yes. Okay, for informational purposes, just a couple little things to wrap up here. We have a primary election Tuesday, June 7, 2011, from 6 in the morning till 8 p.m. We have a workshop meeting Tuesday, June 14th, executive session at 6.30, regular session at 7.30. We have a regular meeting in June is June 28th, executive session at 6.30, regular session at 7.30. If you all will just indulge me for one moment. Um, Thursday is a very special day here in Howell Township that the, the owner of Eagle Oaks Golf and Country Club has, uh, has put on for the last three years. Um, he's a Marine. As John Costco will tell you, once a Marine, always a Marine. And uh, the owner of Eagle Oaks, um, he's uh, started a day called Honor Day during Fleet Week. Uh, at Eagle Oaks Golf Club. During the day, 44 Marines golf with 44 members. And then at night, another five busloads of Marines come in that are up here for Fleet Week in New York. And uh, there's 250 Marines and about anywhere from 350 to 450 other people. Uh, it's, uh, it's probably for the members um, the best day we have of the year. Uh, it's a day to honor men and women that are fighting in our military. Uh, most of them that come that day are, are about to be deployed overseas. Um, very special day. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm a proud participant. I've been there for a few years. I will be there playing golf this year. And uh, I'll be there at night. Uh, a few other representatives from the county will be there with me, just enjoying their company. And honoring them. So I'd like to read this. It's a proclamation that'll be given to the, I believe it's the Sergeant Major that runs the troops. Um, and it's for Honor Day. Whereas the U.S. Marine Corps has answered the call to defend our nation and their service and sacrifice, and their sacrifice humbles us all. And whereas on this day, Honor Day, in a very small but meaningful way, we pay tribute to these patriots who risked their lives sometimes given their last full measure of devotion to preserve our republic. And whereas Eagle Oaks Golf and Country Club will be hosting the third annual honor day to welcome 244 warriors of the 24th Marine Expeditionary Unit who will be arriving for Fleet Week activities. And whereas 44 of these Marines will enjoy a day of golf to culminate with an evening ceremony in celebration and honor where they will be joined by 200 of fellow Marines for a day we hope will never, they will never forget. Whereas we are certain that this event will inspire its participants to promote a greater appreciation for our American culture for those who fight in its defense. And whereas we as Americans owe our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Coast Guardsmen, and Marines more than our gratitude, we owe them our vigilant support. Now, therefore, I, Robert F. Walsh, hereby proclaim as Mayor of the Township of Hal, May 26, 2011, as Honor Day in our township. Be it further resolved that I encourage all my fellow citizens to raise our flags high to honor the U.S. Marine Corps who help keep us safe as we affirm our commitment to fulfill our duty to support all of our servicemen and women. It's a beautiful day. Uh, I know uh, in how we do, a, we do a pretty good job of honoring our former servicemen, our current servicemen. And uh, we have Memorial Day coming up on Monday. i just like to tell everybody that uh, that's been in the military, in the military now, or going into the military, you know, thank you for me. Um, I happen to love where I live in Hal Township, Monmouth County, New Jersey, United States. And uh, a lot of the way it is today is because those that were willing to put that uniform on and say, I'm willing to fight for the freedoms that we all get to enjoy on a daily basis. And, uh, it's the Marine Corps that day. I, I want to tell a little story that uh, it touched me when it happened. And uh, 
and I never looked at it the same since. Uh, the head of the Marines ground forces over in, in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan spoke two years ago. And there was about 12 Navy corpsmen there that day. And out of 600 people, you know who they were. They were all dressed in white in their corpsmen uniforms. And uh, the gentleman, Sergeant Major, spoke and he said, you know, I'd like to, the Navy corpsmen to stand up. And they stood up. And uh, he said, you know, the Navy corpsmen are the butt of a lot of jokes, a lot of good humor from Marines. He says, but for me and every other Marine in this world, to you, we want to let you know that we know that while everybody else is running from a battlefield, you're running onto a battlefield to save Marines' lives. And we will forever be in your gratitude. There wasn't a dry eye in the house. Uh, everybody was hugging the corpsmen, and uh, they were lining up. And it was just a, a beautiful moment. I've never looked at it like that in my life, and I will, I will never look at it any other way again. So it's a beautiful day over there in Howe Township. Uh, just a little symbol of, I think, how we all should be towards our service. But that's my personal opinion. I'm sure I'll get an email or two this week, uh, something negative about I shouldn't be talking like that from the dais. But uh, me personally, I don't care what anybody else thinks about that. Uh, that's my own personal thoughts and feelings. That's why I pray for them all the time to come home safely. God bless you all. God bless the Marine Corps and all our servicemen. And I do pray that they all come home safely. So, in the motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. So I have a second. I have Mr. Smith. Can I have a roll call, please? Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Gatto? Yes. Mayor Walsh? Yes. God bless you and good night.